as Greedy and I'm the Make Stretch Practice Lead for iAcademy. Uh, I think we had a bit of feedback from yourselves um, about what you'd like to cover today. Uh, a lot of you said that you wanted to see the, the new features of version 10. Uh, but as you know, version 10 comes with a lot of new features. So what, what I've done is I've compiled uh, these features uh, and uh, around 20 slides and I've, I've focused on the ones that you really need to look out for, especially if you're upgrading or, or already have upgraded from version 9. Uh, I think, do, do we have a flyer for the new features? Yeah, possibly, yeah, check it yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start um, with the terminology changes because uh, I'm going through these slides. Uh, I'm going to refer to either dashboards, which is formerly known as the Visual Insight tool, uh, or I'm going to refer to documents or report services do uh, documents, which you might know as dashboards. So there's a bit of confusion there. So when I mention the word dashboard, I'm talking about the Visual Insight tool. When I say document, I'm talking about report services documents and I'm going to add to you web. So the first uh, new, new feature uh, is regarding the session idle, uh, session idle time warning. Uh, so as you know, if you've, um, if you've been idle, if you have been clicking buttons and typing things in MicroStrategy, uh, I think the default timeout time is around 10 minutes, which is, which is actually quite short. So for me, you know, I, I often work with two monitors. On, on the right-hand side, I'll have MicroStrategy, and on the left-hand side, I'll have emails or documentation. Uh, and I could be working through a MicroStrategy document, and I could be sending an email that takes 11 minutes, and I go back to make a, a change in MicroStrategy, and I'm kicked out without any warning. I haven't saved my work as I go along, so I've, I've lost everything. Um, so luckily now, there is a feature that uh, allows you to configure uh, how long MicroStrategy warns you before your session times out. Uh, and you wouldn't believe how, how many times I've been kicked out without saving my actual work. Um, so I think most users can configure that in their, in their preferences now. But failing that, let, let's imagine you've, uh, you've, like me, you've been working on two screens and you've been fully focused on doing documentation and you haven't seen the warning sign that, that's popped up uh, and your, your session times out. Uh, what can happen is MicroStrategy can now, when you log back in, you can be taken to the previous document you were working on. Uh, it'll either do that or on the home screen, it'll give you a link to the previous document you were actually working on. And uh, although it seems like a small feature, it probably should have been there in other versions, but uh, this will probably save a lot of time because not everyone sort of remembers to save their work as they go along. So this is actually quite a, a, a large feature for, for, for me. Uh, the other uh, good feature regarding filters is the option to exclude weekends. That, but it's a, it's a checkbox in the, in the web dynamic date filter. Um, and I, I remember I was working um, for a drinks company and uh, they were wanting to see their production of bottled goods over a month daily. And uh, but they didn't tell us that the factories actually shut at the weekend. So when we produced a graph, you would have production going throughout the weekend. When it got to Saturday, it would dip down to zero, go back up. So that doesn't look that great. So they asked us to um, omit weekends, um, but because of the security privileges, we didn't have the option to edit schema objects to apply date functions. Um, so I had to do a complex custom filter, but we didn't even have a day or week attribute to filter on. So I had to do a complex filter, but with this new feature, um, it would have taken me seconds to sort of do that. Important data, so I think in, in version 9.4, <coughs> Uh, there was only a handful of options. I think we had an Excel file, a CSV file, uh, connected to a database, and I think there was one or two of those. Uh, but now, as you can see, the, the it's quite hard to see with the sort of brightness of the screen. Uh, but the most important ones, I guess, are being able to connect to Hadoop for big data, uh, being able to connect uh, to other BI tools, such as SAP Business Objects and IBM Cognos, uh, also connecting to Google Analytics, uh, and if you want to do a bit of Facebook stocking, you can import data from Facebook as well, as well as Twitter. Um, uh, Scott Cunliffe from MicroStrategy is going to cover this in, in, a, in a lot more detail, but I'm just going to touch on it briefly. Uh, data wrangling, so uh, it's, a, it's a brand new feature in version 10, and it allows you to explore your data, evaluate its, its quality, and therefore improve on the quality before you actually import it into MicroStrategy web. Uh, and just briefly, um, imagine you're, you're working with a, a, a subset of data of, of your wider warehouse. 
uh, and, and you, you want to see how that's looking in terms of quality. So you can, you can upload that, you can apply scripts to it, you can uh, remove blank spaces, you can filter your data, delete rows, um, you can find and replace, you can concatenate columns together and so on. Uh, we're going to cover that in a bit more detail later on today. A change to the, the view mode, so previously in version 9 there were three main display modes for documents. You had express mode, you had interactive mode and you had flash mode. Uh, that's now all consolidated in, in, into one mode called presentation mode. So in version 10, uh, flash mode and interactive mode are disabled by, by default. Uh, and express mode uh, in version 10.0 is the default display mode for all, all documents. Uh, but as of version 10.1, that's now replaced uh, with presentation mode. There's one thing to note when you're upgrading from version 9 to version 10, uh, all documents running in express mode will automatically open up in presentation mode. However, if you have developed documents in flash or interactive mode, uh, they will still run in flash and in interactive mode. It's just that they're not going to be there forever. So if, if you upgrade, your main priority should be to convert your other documents to presentation mode. What is presentation mode? Well, it's going to be the new default presentation mode that is the only display mode in, in version 10 uh, and actually having having one default display mode compared to three actually simplifies things uh, because obviously um, in version 9 for one you had the option of three different display modes none of which were particularly the, the, the right one uh, but now that we've got one there's a choice made for you presentation mode utilizes HTML5 technology uh, which provides an enhanced performance and cleaner visual look and because of this um, it's, it's going to gradually phase out flash mode because it's becoming a bit more dominant and uh, flash mode there's a, there's a lot of bugs and I've read somewhere that there's some security issues in there as well with, with flash. They had to come out and do a statement to apologise for kind of uh, a hole that they, they, they sort of found so that flash mode is getting fa phased out. Automatic resizing of documents, so that is something you would assume would, would be there, but um, in version 9.4.1, I remember I was uh, working for a company who had a scorecard slash dashboard that they wanted to display uh, in various parts of the UK, and uh, the different teams were all viewing this dashboard in different media, so uh, one team were viewing it on a PC monitor, another team on a, a laptop, another team on an iPad and then some some of us were on a large screen TV and others were using projector screens. Uh, because I was working version 9 for one I didn't have that automatic resizing option. So what I had to do is build the dashboard for the smallest possible media. I think out of all those, I think iPads with a 10.1 inch screen was the smallest possible media. And uh, you can imagine I was running out of screen real estate there, so there isn't a lot of space there, so uh, I couldn't display all, all the all the data that I wanted to. Uh, but now thanks to the automatic Sizing, whether you're you know, on an iPad or a, a, a large screen TV uh, or if you're just resizing your, your browser, the, the dashboard should adapt to that now. So th this is just a, a list of uh, 100 UK brands and you can see they've all got their own sort of format and theme. Uh, but what Microsoft 10 is, is offering is the ability to create your own theme and apply that to documents. So whether you're at one of these top uh, 100 brands or whether you're a 20 strong and fast growth firm, making branding and formatting changes across your organization is not an easy process. So, uh, a good example, I guess, would be um, the, the recently demerged Clydesdale Bank, who have just launched a new branding. I mean, they, they could potentially have dozens and dozens of documents formatted to the old color scheme, and it's someone's job to go in there and format all of that to make the new color schemes, and that, that's a long process. That, that, that could take weeks. Uh, but now you can, you can apply a set of formatting and you can save that as a theme to which you can apply um, apply that theme to uh, documents as a whole, or you can apply that theme to an individual text box or a grid or a, even a selector. Um, so it means that you'll be spending a lot less time formatting documents because although you think the, the biggest battle is producing a, a dashboard that people can use, actually a lot of the time we have to format and to adhere to corporate branding. On a similar note, um, you can now embed images in dashboards uh, so as of version 10, um, you can now uh, insert images into the dashboard tool. Uh, previously you weren't able to do that, so Visual Insight was pretty much what you see is what you get. Um, 
but now you can customise that. So previously you, you, you had to, if you wanted to include an image, you had to um, apply a URL or, or you had to uh, place the image in a specific directory on the MixTracky server, uh, which is a bit fidgety. So now in version 10.3, you can actually drag and drop an image from your, from your PC and that image gets embedded into that, that dashboard, which means when you export it, you will always see that image. I don't know if you've ever exported uh, a dashboard to a PDF, if you've got an image there, it doesn't always show, it gives you that sort of red X. But now when you embed these images, those, those images will always be visible. Uh, this seems like a small change, but it's actually it's actually quite big. Uh, the new new date selector allows users to choose the to and from date. Uh, to give you an idea of how, how significant this this change is, if you wanted the user to be able to, to specify a date range, you had to either uh, apply a prompt which uh, restricts the data at, at runtime, or you had to use what's called a time series slider. And you've probably seen them at the, at the bottom of a line chart click to the left or the right to narrow the date range, but the sort of downside with prompts is that you're restricting the data at runtime, so if the user wants to change that selection, they have to re-prompt the document, which has another layer of complexity, uh, and with the time series slider, only really fits, uh, if, if you're using a sort of graph, a sort of time series graph, if you had a grid and you wanted to use a time series slider, it wouldn't quite look right, uh, but now, you can have uh, a sort of date picker that has a to and, to and from date, and that's actually that's probably going to change the way people use documents and make a strategy, so that's what we're looking at for. Uh, reusing panel stacks, so um, I'm going to go into what a panel stack act actually is, but I just want to mention that you can copy and paste panel stacks within a document or even to a different document. Uh, all panels within that stack, including grids, graphs, text boxes, they will all be copied over with the original formatting. <coughs> And this allows you to, to, to reuse them, making the design, design process simpler and uh, faster. So, for those of you who are unaware of what panel stacks are, I'm just going to do a sort of brief um, spiel here. So, panel stacks allow you to layer the information in your document in order to avoid overloading the end user with too much information. Uh, similar to the way I'm doing this PowerPoint slides, and there's, there are around 22 slides here, but if I, if I displayed all the information on those 22 slides to you, you're not going to be able to learn anything here and be able to process that. So I'm doing it one at a time. So that's very similar with panel stacks. So because of that reason, um, you know, whenever I'm building a document, I almost always use uh, at least one panel stack in there. Um, and because they allow the user to navigate between things, they, they add a bit of interactivity and they allow you to build things. So they're actually a really vital part. And up until version 10.3, you couldn't copy and paste them. Because you actually spend a, a lot of time formatting these, these panel stacks and the grids within those panels. Uh, and if you can't copy and paste them, you have to create a separate one and painstakingly copy and paste each individual grid in each individual panel, which again is time consuming. So this is going to save a lot of development time. So it didn't seem like a, a big feature to, to start. Hopefully you'll understand this is quite significant. Uh, but probably my favourite new feature is the right attributes. And for those of you who have maybe used other BI tools such as business objects and you used to be able to create your own variables, this is making strategies the equivalent of, of that. So they're actually based on uh, data set objects that you add to a document. And before I, before I go on to explain more, more about them, I want to talk about the previous ways you would, you would have to use to create your own variable. So the first way was derived elements. Now, uh, although you can group things together in derived elements, they restrict you to only be able to use uh, the elements of one attribute at any given time. And also, you can't apply any complex functions to that either. So the other way, you maybe create custom groups. So they're a bit more flexible, but they produce very complex SQL. And I'm known uh, teams to use a lot of custom groups and actually because of the SQL generator the reports just won't run and um, so derived attributes goes a long way to actually um, fixing those issues so up until now there was no feature for a, a, a web user to create their own attribute uh, without altering the schema design uh, and derived attributes actually are created after the SQL has been generated which means they're, they're dealt with by MicroStrategy's analytical engine which means the results are usually instant. And uh, users can now create an attribute based on other attributes as well as metrics uh, requiring it without requiring uh, any architect privileges. So obviously, 
Um, the, the key key word there at the end is, is flexibility for, for end users, because as you as you probably know, you can be as thorough as you possibly can when you're creating schemas to deal with every possible important scenario. Uh, but obviously, uh, there, there's always someone asking for, for something that you haven't seen. Uh, so and there's there's also a lot of tight rest restrictions on security and uh, for schema design. So if a user wants to be able to create their own variable without altering any of that, this, this feature will allow them to do that. So uh, they offer the users the ability to achieve this ad hoc importance scenario uh, in a safe and flexible way. Uh, increased functionality in dashboards. So this is another really important one. So if it, for anyone who's ever used Visual Insight, uh, you probably agree, like although it, it looks great, it's very easy to use, it's quite slick. Uh, it's very rigid and it doesn't really allow you to make a lot of format changes. Uh, but now there's a lot of increased functionality and more importantly flexibility. Uh, you can add images and logos which you couldn't do before. So you can have a, a dashboard that um, follows corporate branding and, and themes. Uh, but the most important part is still very easy to use. And actually the increased um, flexibility of this dashboard tool interests me because um, I've always just considered Visual Insight or the dashboard tool um, just for mocking up a very quick dashboard on the fly or to see what's possible with my um, sample of data, uh, just to see what it's looking like. I never really considered it for anything longer term than a quick proof of concept. Uh, but with this increased functionality and the, the extra format and options, I think people are going to seriously consider this uh, sort of dashboard tool uh, as their main presentation outlet. And that's quite a big statement because uh, whenever someone asks me to get a dashboard for them, 99% of the time I'm going to use the Port Services document tool. But now I'm not so sure whether I'm going to use that or, or, or I'm going to use this. If this allows you to uh, change the format and colours, change the fonts and different graphs and add logos, uh, as well as the fact that it's very easy to use and it's, you can't really go, go wrong with it. I think if, if you're someone who develops dashboards or if you're in charge of a team of people who develop dashboards, who uh, maybe don't have the time for the training and sort of learning curve, uh, this could be the way for them to go. Um, it could offer a good long-term al alternative um, because obviously you can, you can add logos and video to proper branding uh, and it allows people with very little micro strategy and experience to produce professional looking interactive dashboards. But obviously the most important part is it's still very pick up and play, it's still very easy to use. So. Uh, what MicroStrategy have done with version 10 is they've, they've attempted to reduce the, the learning curve it takes to actually get, get good at this. Um, everything is just made a lot simpler and a lot easier. Uh, you can do things quicker, development time has been brought down, uh, and users can easier benefit from self self PI. So, previously, um, producing high quality interactive dashboards did require a high level of uh, training. Uh, which, which can be quite time consuming. Um, but version 10 goes along with tackling these issues by making things simpler, uh, reducing the learning curve, and just really offering flexibility for end, end users. That's been thank you very much.